Hi everybody. Just want to go ahead and put together a tutorial video on how to make the best use of a Peloton exercise bike with the display that comes built in and how to project that onto a large screen, large format TV. Um, we found in our experience here, the home little workout area, that it's very challenging when you choose to do a ride or an exercise class other than a ride because it's a little hard to look at the screen for the instruction and meanwhile you might be on the floor doing a yoga or a stretching exercise or some other form of exercise other than riding and the peloton has the ability to cast or mirror the screen to a large format perhaps a wall mounted tv uh, in this particular case, um, this TV is a Panasonic, uh, it's an older model, plasma set, and it does not have the built-in capability of mirroring. And uh, we found that uh, in my research that the Chromecast, which I have elsewhere at home, I, it's not compatible with the Peloton for using a Chromecast connected to the TV to stream the Peloton content onto that screen. So here is the solution. It's the Roku Streaming Stick, which has a number of other advantages that we're not going to get into here in this particular video. But uh, this, uh, at the time of this filming, is a $50 device that has an HDMI connection that will connect to the TV, connect to the home Wi-Fi, enable the transmittal of the Peloton video to that large screen display. So let's see how it goes. All right, opening the box of the Roku streaming stick. Um, one thing I want to mention is there's a, I guess, a standard uh, streaming stick, and there's also the streaming stick plus. Uh, the plus, as I understand it, is for 4K, uh, super high def uh, televisions, and uh, you know they're coming out with 8K uh, and beyond uh, presently. Uh, this TV is high def; it's not 4K, so I got the standard streaming stick. So uh, let's see how I can go ahead and pop it out here. And um, see here, it's a, kind of like a, a USB or a thumb drive. It's got an HDMI connection at one side. Notice HDMI is a little different than a USB. It's not the same. And it uh, looks like at the other end, there's an expansion for a micro USB uh, connector. So that's the stick. Looks like you got an instruction manual or a quick start guide here. Uh, it comes with a remote. It comes with a battery for the remote and a uh, charging cable, it looks like. So uh, let's uh, get it out here and have a All look. All right, having uh, reviewed the instructions here, um, this little port on the end of the Roku streaming stick, micro USB, is actually for the included USB cable. So that connects right into the end of the stick there. Make sure it's... Uh, aligned correctly and orientated correctly and the other end then either connects into a USB port on the TV or to this plug adapter and then to an outlet in the wall. Uh, the instruction manual says that for best results ensure that the stick receives its own source of power. That could either be through the included plug or removing the plug using the cable alone and connecting it to one of the USB ports on your television set. Okay, now here in my case, my TV is already wall mounted and it's a very narrow access in order to get behind it. But I was able to look up the location of the different connections online and then I was able to feel my way and actually insert the HDMI, the Roku stick into HDMI 2. I then took the USB cable and I was able to connect it for power into one of the USB ports in the back of the TV. Now keep in mind, a red light will illuminate on the Roku stick if the USB port is not providing enough power. And in that case, you'll need to use the supplied plug to plug it into a regular AC outlet. In some cases, USB ports just do not provide enough power for the connected device. The next step here is to go ahead and, you know, with your remote, Change the input to the source, and in this case, HDMI 2 is my Roku streaming stick. 
Now it wants me to pair the remote. I have taken the remote, I've inserted the batteries. So, in order to do that, it looks like the instructions are indicating to press a little button on the back of the remote. Let me remove the plastic here. And, uh, well, it looks like it paired it on its own. So let's get started. Okay, make your selection. Just learning the remote here, English, start. Looking for wireless networks. Then you want to make sure you have the network name of your home network and your password easily accessible because you're going to need to enter your password. Hopefully you have a password security on your home Wi-Fi network. I'm going to go ahead and get that done here. Upon connecting to your wireless network and entering your password, the Roku player will then go ahead and look for any updates, software or firmware updates, and proceed to download those. Just go ahead and click OK on the remote and go ahead and allow it to proceed. I do not have a good internet signal here, so this might uh, take a little while. All right, upon completion of the downloading of the software updates to your Roku, Roku streaming stick, it will reboot and then it will take you into this additional setup screen. So go ahead and press OK on your remote and proceed through the continuation of the setup. All right, it will take you to the next screen. It will check your definition based upon your TV set and go ahead and click on OK. It will uh, ask you if the screen looks good. If so, go ahead and choose OK. And choose OK. All right, here I want to use the full high def 1080p. And select OK. It will go ahead and run the analysis. And it will then set the HDMI input that it's connected to to play at the appropriate resolution. Uh, don't get too lost here in these settings. Um, you can always refer to the manual or the online help. All right, determine if the screen looks good. Then it looks like it goes over a tutorial with your remote, so you can go ahead and get familiar with that. Proceed through the go steps. Ahead and use the remote to proceed through the screens. It might play a audio jingle for you and ask you if you hear the audio stop playing. You might have to go ahead and select the model of the TV and proceed through a few more screens to get to the final success screen. And then go ahead and click on OK on your remote as the screen tells you to do. All right, then you want to go ahead and set up a Roku account. Uh, I believe it also will want to put a credit card on file not to be used for any thing up front, but only for any future purchases you might make. It's just part of the setup process. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the video and proceed through this. Right, once you create your Roku account, assuming you didn't have one already, and enter your credit card information just to be retained, uh, you can go ahead and select the different types of media and content you're interested in. Uh, the Roku streaming stick will then update and add the channels you've chosen. You'll also be presented with some trial 30-day uh, options or uh, trials to different uh, channels and programming. Um, just go ahead and proceed through that, comma. Uh, not really the main focus here, but uh, this is just going through the setup sequence. And should you see this particular alert on your screen, letting you know that the USB port that you might be connected to on the back of your TV is not sufficient to power the screen. So you might have to use the plug and plug that into a, an AC out. All right, now that you've gotten your Roku uh, connected, uh, powered appropriately, and all the updates applied, uh, and downloaded any channels you might be interested in, um, now we want to go ahead and make sure that your Peloton is set through its settings to enable the uh, screen mirroring. So what you want to do here is come to your Peloton touchscreen, and the upper right you have uh, settings. Go ahead and touch on that. And then you're going to see you have cast screen as one of your options there. Go ahead and click there. Now you might see a message, no nearby devices were found, but then it will go ahead and look and see if it detects any devices. So here it has located, uh, the second item here on the list is Roku streaming stick. Um, 
and go ahead and click on that item there and then you're going to see that it's connecting it's showing that it's trying to connect to that uh, streaming stick and now you notice the TV it's detecting and it's saying would you like to connect you know the Android here in this particular item the uh, Peloton is an Android would you like to cast video to your TV always allow allow block or always block I'm going to click on allow on the remote and then it's going to go ahead and load it's going to do the Roku cast test you'll see it's loading hopefully this won't take too long here but it's trying to establish the connection between the television alright now it's starting the video and there's no video displayed here so All right, to go ahead and set up the stream uh, uh, video casting from the Roku, uh, from your Peloton to your Roku stick. I'm going to go ahead and uh, go through your settings menu. And if you come here into settings and then over, you're going to see you have an option going down the screen here. Under system, and you go over to screen mirroring. Screen mirroring mode. You want to make sure the Roku is in screen mirroring mode. And you have options here to either prompt, which will prompt you for your input, always allow, or never allow. Okay. You can also set up under screen mirroring devices, always allow devices. All right, if you have any devices in your list. All right, and this gives you a little bit of breakdown here of what it means to prompt, always allow, or never allow. I'm going to keep it on prompt just so we can see how that works. Now back on the Peloton screen, we went ahead and we clicked to settings and Roku streaming stick. Let's go ahead and see if we can go ahead and get connected there. And now it should see, you see there, prompt, always allow, allow blocks on allow all right so it's connecting the devices it's starting the video from the device and there you go you actually have a duplication of the video from the peloton screen to the large screen so if i go back out here see there you go you've got the full peloton you have all the classes now maybe not as important for a, a bicycling class but it might work nicely to see the display not only immediately in front of you, also cast onto the large screen, but if you're doing an exercise class, as you go through the menus, an exercise class will be a lot easier to work in the middle of the floor and then to go ahead and watch the large screen and the instruction coming from that screen as opposed to your Peloton.